Good morning, everyone. So it is still morning. Yep, it's 11 a.m. Central Time here in Chicago. My name is Elena. I'm at the kids' table. And we are back in the main room now. I was in the back room for a little while, but um, our team camp instructor who is instructing here, Mr. Sam, you guys might know him. He used to do the Facebook Live. Uh, he moved back to North Carolina to open his restaurant, so he's teaching camp from there which means I got our main room back, so welcome. Um, I'm very happy to be here today making rainbow salsa with you guys. All right, so uh, I know people are just joining now, so while everybody is kind of joining and getting settled, by the way, please introduce yourself if you'd like in the little chat. I'd love to know who's cooking with us today. Um, just to remind you guys, I'm Elena. I'm the founder of The Kids Table. I love doing these classes. I'm very happy that you're here. Um, let's go ahead and go over the ingredients and the equipment that we need for today. And then if you haven't already, of course, wash your hands. So let's go over everything we need, wash your hands, and then in a few minutes, we'll actually get started. So as far as ingredients go, um, we need a, an ear of corn, and if you don't have fresh corn, then, and to, this is the season for fresh corn now, so hopefully you have fresh corn. Um, I have an ear of corn here. If you don't have fresh corn, you can use frozen, just make sure it's thawed, or you can thaw it a little bit in the microwave now. So you'd want an ear of corn or uh, a cup of corn, and I haven't cooked my corn yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn my water on actually right now, to get my water boiling so I can cook my corn. So you need an ear of corn and you need a pepper. So I've got a red bell pepper that I've cut into strips to make it easier for me to use my chopper. So I have one red bell pepper. I have an avocado, so you need an avocado. I have half of a red onion, small, half a small red onion and I've cut it into like half slices, like little rainbows. And I have a can of black beans that if you haven't done so already, you can drain and rinse them because you don't want all that bean juice in your salsa. Okay, and what else do I have? I need a, a lime and salt. And then of course we need something to dip in our salsa. So either tortilla chips or if you want, you can just have tortillas, which is what I'm doing. And I'm gonna make my own tortilla chips with some stale corn tortillas that I have that would probably break if I tried to make tacos with them. So instead I'm gonna make chips with them. And then if you're gonna make chips with me, you're gonna want some oil, like some neutral oil, like canola or grapeseed or avocado and some salt. All right, and then as far as equipment goes, we don't need a lot. I've got a cutting board. I have a chopper, which is the awesome tool that we use with kids to cut. Um, it's a lot safer for young kids than a knife. I have a juicer, but you could juice with your hand too. No big deal. I don't even own a juicer at my house. And a bowl and a spoon, of course, for mixing. And then I have a garbage bowl here very useful to keep a garbage bowl to just put your bits in so you don't end up dirtying your whole work surface, at least not as much. Um, you are gonna need a chef knife if you have a corn cob to cut the um, kernels off the corn. So we're gonna do that together. And, and of course, if you haven't prepped your uh, peppers or onions into strips that uh, you can use with the chopper, you'll want a chef knife around too. Um, and if you're making your own chips, you're gonna want a baking sheet with parchment paper. Okay, so hopefully that gives you the lay of the land with what we're gonna need to make our rainbow salsa. Um, the first thing that, of course, wash your hands if you haven't done so already. And we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is cook my corn. Now, like I said, you can definitely use frozen corn, though this is the time of year to use fresh corn if you can because it's corn season, fresh corn is growing in a lot of the country right now, and it is delicious if you get good stuff. 
So fresh corn is best if it's in season, but frozen corn works fine too. So if you are using frozen corn, you'll want one cup. Make sure it's thawed. You don't need to heat it, just thaw it. If you're using a, a, an ear of corn like I am, you're gonna shuck it, which means you're gonna remove the, um, these kind of papery, they're not really papery, but these leaves and also the, the husk, that's the word I'm looking for, it's not leaves, the husk of the corn, you're gonna wanna take that off and you're gonna wanna take the silks of the corn off. So those are those really soft, yellow, they're almost like little hairs on the inside. So we wanna take those off. You might not be able to get them all. This is where your garbage bowl comes in handy, okay? So you can have your garbage bowl, just put that right in there. And then you can put the, it in the compost, if you compost, or in the trash when you're done. So get as much of the silk off as you can. I've got a pot of water almost boiling right here. I'm going to cook the corn just a little bit. I'm basically going to blanch it because corn does not, good corn especially, fresh corn does not need a lot of cooking. It actually tastes even better the less you cook it. And I don't know if you guys have ever tried really good local corn, fresh corn, sweet corn, right raw, right off the top, like shuck it, eat it. You can do that, it's so good. So I'm gonna break this in half now. So you can just kind of oh, use your muscles. It might spray a little corn juice on you, but that's okay. So I broke my cob in half because when we go to cut the kernels off, much easier if your cob is in half, your kernels don't jump around quite as much. So my water is boiling. I'm gonna put these in for just three minutes. Okay. So my clock says 11.07. I'm gonna put these in for three minutes till 11.10. And actually what I need to do is I need to go get some tongs because otherwise I'm gonna have a really hard time pulling my corn cobs out without burning myself. So we're gonna let that cook. And actually Miss Lauren is getting me tongs. She's so sweet. We have a good relationship. She gives me stuff that I forget and I feed her. It's Thank you. It's perfect. Okay. So we've got our corn boiling right now. Like I said, we're just cooking it for three minutes because we don't want it to get that overcooked flavor, that dull flavor. We want it to still be bright and fresh. Now that our corn is going, and I have a mental timer set, so I recommend at home, it's good to set a real timer because sometimes that mental timer fails. You know what I mean? It happens to me all the time. So. But I'm gonna be really good, and in two minutes, I'm gonna to remember to take my corn out. So now, if you are making chips with us, let's go ahead and get our chips made, because those need to cook and cool. And the rest of our salsa is actually raw. Once we get this corn cooked and off the cob, there's no more cooking for the actual salsa. So let's go ahead and do our chips. Tortilla chips are so easy to make yourself, and they're an amazing way to use tortillas that are not bad, but that are maybe a little stale, right? There's nothing worse than trying to make a, a taco with a corn tortilla that is so kind of stale that it cracks down the middle, all your stuff falls out. You know, it's kind of dry. So those aren't great for tacos. They're amazing for tortilla chips. So what you're gonna do is I just have a stack of corn tortillas. I think I have eight. And so they're pretty dry, but again, they're not bad. And let's see, I've got one more minute on my, uh, on my corn. So now we're gonna just rub them with oil. And like I said, a neutral oil, it's bubbling over a little bit, I'm gonna turn it down. So that a neutral oil is something that's not very strong in flavor. So a canola oil, a grapeseed oil, avocado oil. We love to use sunflower oil, which does have a bit of a scent and a bit of a flavor, um, but it doesn't affect at all the tortillas. And we love it because we get it locally from a, from a company in Wisconsin called Century Sun Oil. That's why we like to use that. So we should, oh, by the way, if you're making tortillas with me, preheat your oven to 425 degrees, okay? 
We're gonna roast our tortilla chips or our tortillas in the oven. 425 is what we should preheat. And you're gonna want a baking sheet with parchment. And then there's two ways you can do this. We want to get our, our tortillas covered with oil lightly and we want to sprinkle them with salt. So you can brush the tortillas with oil or you can rub them with your hands. So obviously the hands are, it's, it's very messy. Your hands get oily, but you can wash your hands, okay? You know what? I'm gonna take my corn off and then I'm gonna finish telling you how to do this. So I'm just gonna put this corn right in this bowl just to cool a little bit. Okay, look at that. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Okay, so now our corn is done. I'll move my burner out of the way. Okay, so you can paint the oil on your tortillas, which is really fun if you have a silicone brush. And you can just paint it so that the tortilla is just shiny. You don't want like a pool of oil sitting on it. You just want it shiny like that. And you do both sides. So this is a perfectly fine way to do it. You're going to get a little oil on your hands anyway. Okay. But I have to tell you that I really like using my hands. And that if you want to use your hands, what you would do is just dip your fingers in the oil and rub the tortilla, okay? Now the benefit of using your hands is that it's much harder to over oil your tortilla, right? If you use a brush, you could end up pooling the oil on your tortilla. With your hand, you're, you can really feel it and you're holding it up and any extra oil is gonna drip off, okay? So it's almost more precise because you can use your senses as well to feel whether the tortilla is, is greasy enough or not. And I think this is the same reason that in restaurants, often salads, um, at the salad station, the chef will toss salad with their hands. Okay, gloved, of course, I'm sure. Um, but it's much easier to get a precise, a good amount of dressing on your salad without overdressing or underdressing if you toss it with your hands. So there's something to be said, I think, for using our hands. So I've got our tortillas almost oiled. And then once we do this, we're gonna salt it. So of course I can't salt my tortillas with my really greasy hands. So I am gonna have to wash my hands um, and dry them, okay? And then I'll salt. And then we'll tear our tortillas up into chips. Cause right now it's just, we, this is how you make tostada shells, by the way, same thing, but you stop here and instead of tearing them, like we're gonna tear them today. So I am making tortilla chips for those who are just joining us with my kind of stale, but still good tortillas, corn tortillas. And then we're gonna make our rainbow salsa. Okay, and I'll tell you a little bit about the history of this dish while I finish making our, our tortilla chips. So, I now have my oiled tortillas. They're shiny, okay, but no pool of oil, just nicely greased. Now, I need to get the grease off my hands so I can sprinkle salt all over them. So I'm gonna go wash my hands. You guys should too if you're doing this at home, and I will be right back. My hands were so, they're like moisturized now. So that's an added bonus of using your hands is you're moisturizing your skin. I had to use a paper towel to get the residual oil off. Washing them just didn't quite do it. It's gonna require another washing. Okay, 
So now that my hands aren't greasy and they're dry, I can sprinkle salt on my tortillas. So I'm just gonna go ahead and lay them out. So of course my hands are getting slightly greasy again, but nothing like they were before. And then just gonna do a little sprinkle. Okay, so just using my fingers to sprinkle a little bit of salt. And the oil helps the salt stick to our tortillas. And then we wanna flip them over to salt the other side. So make sure to get some good spinning wrist action here because you don't want um, to have like a big clump of salt in one spot, right? We don't wanna over salt them. Okay, I've got two more right here. Wonderful. So now, I am gonna tear my tortillas into chips. And then I need to arrange them in a single layer. I don't think I'm gonna be able to fit, I think I have too many, all these on one sheet. So I'll stack some to the side and do a second batch. I'll probably only be able to fit about six. So the way I like to break my tortillas into chips is to fold it in half and it'll just break. Usually corn tortillas will do this anyway, but especially if yours are on the more stale side, they're not, you don't, like I said, you don't use super fresh tortillas for this. Fresh tortillas are great for tacos, right? But once they aren't as fresh, you can make chips with them. So see, I broke, I just bent, I just folded it and it broke in half. And then you can just fold it again and it breaks, see? So I think that's good to do it in quarters. You could do it again into eighths, okay? But I'm gonna do mine into quarters because I like the bigger chips. So fold it in half, breaks, and you can even then put the halves together, fold it, and then just press, and there you go. So now our tortillas are already oiled and salted on both sides. We're breaking them. Wow, look at that. That was even more efficient. So what I did was, took my tortilla, folded it in half, and then I didn't even separate the halves, folded it again, press it down, and I have four chips. Look at that. Pretty cool, right? I wonder if I can do these two together. I don't know, let's see. So fold it in half, and then can, will I, can I do it again? Fold it in half again? Oh, I had to go the other way, but it worked. Look at that. So, so easy, guys. They're so delicious. And one of my favorite parts about it is they keep, it's like reduces waste. Right? Like how often do you go in your fridge and you're like, oh, I still have three quarters of a pack of tortillas and now they're stale and then what you throw them away. It's like, nope, now you have an option. You can make chips. Okay, so uh, you wanna spread your chips out in a single layer if you can. There, a little tiny bit of overlap is fine, but you don't want them piled on top of each other because uh, they won't crisp up, right? And nobody likes a soggy tortilla chip. Oh, and by the way, like I said, if you don't break them up and just toast them whole, then you have tostada shells, right? So very cool. Okay, so I've got my tortilla chips all separated out in a single layer, oiled and salted. Well, they're not chips yet, but they will be. I'm gonna go put them in my oven, which is preheated, 425 degrees, and they're gonna cook for let me double check my recipe. I think it's about seven minutes. It is, about seven minutes. So for this, I am gonna set a timer and I'm gonna have to run and check them because you want them to be crispy, but not burnt, right? So we don't want them too brown or they get that like overcooked feeling. So I'm gonna go put these in, I'll be right back and we'll make our salsa while these bake. Okay, all right. So we've got our chips 
in the oven baking. I set my timer for seven minutes. My oven's at 425. Um, and now let's go ahead and make our salsa. So I've already cooked my corn. So if you're using frozen corn, that's totally cool. Um, you'll just uh, wanna make sure it's not frozen anymore, that it's thawed. You don't have to cook it, just thawed, which you can do in the microwave. Um, or, you know, obviously if you have more time, you can just sit it and let it sit in the fridge overnight, something like that. So, of course, now we need to get our, our kernels off our cob. So I broke my corn cob, which is now totally cool, by the way, it's not hot anymore, in half before I cooked it because it's easier to cut the kernels off the cob. So I've got a knife. This is definitely not um, something that you can really do with a chopper. So this requires a chef knife. So older kids only or adults. Um, and then this, having the halved corn cob makes it a lot easier. The corn kernels don't jump around. So it helps to kind of keep them more contained. So you just keep rotating. I try to cut as close to the cob as I can so that I get as much of the kernel off as I can. Oh my gosh, this corn smells so good. Okay. Perfect. Look at that nice clean cob. Put that in my garbage bowl or my compost bowl. And let's finish with this other corn. And then we're gonna taste it. So this is, you definitely wanna taste your ingredients. You know, try to not like lick your fingers or something, or if you do, go wash your hands because you wanna keep your food clean for the rest of your family. You don't wanna share germs. All right, perfect. So now, I'm done, so I'm gonna wipe down my blade, of course, safety first. Put my knife away, I'm done with that. So now I've got, you know, this is about a cup of corn. One cob, a good sized cob, yields about a cup of corn kernels. So I'm gonna taste one. Mmm, so good. And I'm gonna add my corn to my bowl. So I do want to tell you that this salsa, this was one of our early recipes, okay? So Kids Table opened in 2007, and um, so how long ago was that? It's, so that's 13 years ago? We opened in February of 2007, a little more than 13 years ago. So very early, I have, a, I have two sons. My oldest son is gonna be 21 this year, okay? So when he was like seven, eight, maybe nine years old, so very early when Kids Table opened, I made this salsa for him and he loved it so much and we turned it into a Kids Table recipe and we called it Jake's Famous Salsa. His, son, his name is Jake, my older son. And because he loved it so much, this is like one of his favorite dishes that I made when he was seven, eight, nine years old. Of course, nobody knew what that meant. Jake's Famous Salsa, what does that mean? So we changed the name to Rainbow Salsa. And I think you're gonna see why as we add more ingredients in here. So we've got our corn kernels, and now we've got black beans. So this is a whole can of black beans, drained and rinsed. So of course, these beans aren't really black. They're more, they're called black beans, but they're more like purplish. So we've got some yellow corn. We've got some black or purpley kind of beans. Drained and rinsed. I'm going to add them right in here. Okay, so we've got yellow and purple going. You see where this is going, right? Rainbow salsa. Now we are going to add some pepper, some bell pepper. You can use tomato in here instead if you prefer. Um, when Jake was younger, he didn't like tomatoes as much as peppers, and so we started putting peppers in. But tomatoes, especially during good tomatoes, like during tomato season, which is starting right now, tomatoes would be great. But I'm going to use pepper today, and I'm going to do red. So pepper, bell peppers come in all different colors, right? Here's a whole orange one. I have a green one here. Now, green aren't as sweet, so we didn't want to use that. 
We didn't use a yellow one because we've already got yellow corn, right? So we're going for the colorful theme. So we've got red bell pepper. So as I told you, I cut this into strips so that I could use my chopper much more easily to cut it into little cubes. And you always wanna put the pepper down on its side like this when you're using the chopper so the chopper can go through the skin and the flesh of the pepper at the same time. It makes it so much easier. So we basically want everything to be about the same size as our corn kernels and our beans, right? So if you look at the beans and the corn, they're, I mean, they're not exactly the same size, right? But they're similar in size. So we want our other uh, ingredients to be between the size of corn and beans, okay? So I'm making my red pepper about the size of the black, oh, the black bean, okay? By the way, I didn't taste my beans. Hmm. They don't have that much flavor, but pretty good. They're gonna be really good with everything else. And now that I'm at it, let's taste the pepper. Mmm, love red pepper. Very fresh, sweet, crispy, juicy almost. So it's gonna take me a few minutes to cut all these peppers up. And I think my chip timer is about to go off. So I'm gonna go check on my chips because I definitely don't wanna burn. <gasps> there it is. I'm gonna go check on them. So you guys can keep cutting your pepper while I see how my chips are doing. They might need another minute. Okay. another two minutes because some of the parts of the chips were crispy but some were still soft so we're gonna give it two more minutes and then I think they'll be done they look and smell so good all right so I'm just cutting up my pepper here again to be about the same size as you know it doesn't have to be exact but about the same size as my corn and my pep uh no my beans my corn and my beans because you know salsa, you eat it on a chip, you want a little bit of everything in each bite, right? So you don't want a big hunk of pepper that's gonna be, you know, kind of take up your whole chip. That's the purpose. All right, I've got a few more pieces of pepper left. And then we're gonna move on to another ingredient. Oh, mini peppers, yes, no problem at all. So let's see, you know, I would say you want about a cup worth of chopped peppers. Okay, so we have about a cup of corn. Our salsa is of almost equal parts of all of our ingredients. It's gonna have a little more beans, uh, but the avocado, the peppers, and the corn should all come out to about a cup. So what you can do is start chopping them, take a measuring cup, and just add them and keep cutting them up until you fill your measuring cup. And that should be perfect. Wonderful. All right, I've just got a few more strips of pepper to go. Those mini peppers are so cute too. I love those. That's my timer. All right, I think my chips are done. I'm gonna just do my last pepper while before I get up, you're gonna hear my timer go off again so I don't forget my oven. Thank you, oven, for the reminder. Okay, I'll be right back. They 
look so good. Look at this. So they're nice and crispy. They're not flimsy at all, okay? And look at how much more space is on my sheet tray now, right? Because in the oven, the moisture cooked off, so the chips like shrunk a little bit, right? But they look really good, I'm excited. So I really want to try one now, but they're really hot. So I'm going to let them cool. which are really kind of like a dark purple, and um, a red bell pepper. So now it's time, I think, that we added another color. How about, now this looks black, right? But it's not, it's actually a very dark green, but on the inside, check it out. Do you guys know what this is? Anyone? I kind of gave it away earlier. I'll show you what the inside looks like. By the way, I cut it. I'm not just magically twisting the avocado open. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Nice, pale, very bright, pale green. So pretty. So, I cut my avocado into quarters. And I kept it together just to, um, you know, keep the avocado from browning while we were waiting for class to start. Oh, my pit is a little stuck in there. Okay. So we're going to peel off the skin because we don't want that in our, um, in our salsa. Oops. Put that in my garbage bowl there. Let's move my garbage bowl closer. So we're going to cut our avocado again into the same size pieces roughly as we did our peppers. So we want them to be about the same size as our uh, black beans, somewhere between our black beans and our corn. Avocado is really easy to cut with a chopper. So I've got all my skin peeled off here. Not my skin, the avocado skin. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut this into slices. I love these wavy choppers because they make really pretty uh, patterns. And then the thicker ones I'm gonna cut again, right? Because I don't want my avocado pieces too big. Oh my gosh, so delicious. Okay, just go ahead and put the avocado right in there. And you definitely don't want uh, avocado an avocado that's too soft for this. A really soft ripe avocado is great for guacamole. Uh, for this, if I mean, it's not bad, but if the avocado is like a little overly ripe, then when you go to stir it up, the um, avocado will, might start to mush up a little bit. So we're gonna stir this pretty gently. This avocado is, I think, the perfect amount of ripe. So it's soft, but it's not mushy. So cut this again. So I'm cutting each quarter into three strips. And then I'm going to cut the strips a little bit so that I have, so I'm cutting cubes about this big. Okay. Oh, don't forget to taste. Try not to lick your fingers though. If you do lick your fingers, just go wash your hands. Okay. I've got almost half my avocado in here. Are you guys getting hungry? You can use this, by the way. We're just eating it with chips, but you can totally put use this as a taco topping. I'm actually gonna make breakfast tacos in camp later. I could use this as a topping for breakfast tacos, which we just use scrambled eggs in there. Mm, and then put this on top. Delicious. 
course, if we don't eat meat here, but if you eat meat, you could put this on like chicken tacos. We've made a rice and bean salad with this. Basically just make this salsa and then add a little oil and extra lime juice and even a little cumin and it becomes like a, like a rice and bean salad. So many possibilities. Okay, I've got one quarter of my avocado left. How are you guys doing? Are you getting all your stuff chopped up at home? You keeping up? Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you need me to slow down. Hopefully you guys are working together at home so you're splitting up the work with someone else. I've got to do all my chopping by myself. And my hands are very avocado-y right now. So I'm gonna have to wipe them off. Or I could just use my apron. It's the beauty of wearing an apron. Okay. Last piece, guys. Woo! And that was our biggest that was our last large ingredient to chop up. We have one more thing to cut, but it's not a lot. Okay, I've got my paper towel here. I'm gonna use this again. My glasses are falling down. Okay, so now we've got, look at, you can see how colorful this is, right? We have yellow corn red peppers, a beautiful green avocado. We have some black beans, which like I said, we're calling dark purple. And now we're gonna put some red onion. Now red onion is actually more like, like a magenta, like a pink. Isn't that pretty? Get this. So this is a small red onion, so I'm only using half. So what I did is I cut these, we want our onion pieces even smaller than, I mean, even a little bit smaller than our corn. I love red onion, but it can be kind of spicy and strong, especially when it's raw. So I cut these pretty thin into these little rainbows. Okay, so they're like a quarter inch thick. And now I'm gonna use the chopper to really finely, it's like between a fine chop and a dice, a small dice. So we want small little cubes um, so that we get, we want this onion to spread through our whole salsa to put a little bit of onion flavor in each bite. And this is the last thing we're chopping. Then we're just gonna add a little bit of seasoning. And the seasoning for this salsa is so simple. It's just lime juice and salt, that's it. If you want, you could add a little cumin, if you'd like. When we turn this into a rice and bean salad, I do add cumin. But for the salsa, I just keep it simple. I like the lime juice and the salt. Okay. I've got most of my onion cut up. I'm going to go ahead and scrape that in there. And I'm waiting to the end to stir it because I don't want to overmix that avocado and get, you know, get it all mushy. So I'm going to gently toss it all together at the end. I, should I be brave and try my onion raw? I think I will. It's gonna be a little bit spicy, but if it's too spicy for me, then I'll just, um, it's not like it's spicy, like hot spicy, but kind of strong. But I'm gonna try it. I can always go get a little bit of water to wash it down. Hmm. I kind of like it, raw onion. I wouldn't want to eat a lot of it plain. Okay, so now, we just added some beautiful pink, kind of magenta-y color to our salsa. Now we are ready to season our salsa with some lime and some salt. So I'm gonna get rid of my 
cutting board and my chopper. I don't need that anymore. I already cut my lime into halves. I cut it in half crosswise. And before I did that, I rolled my lime. So you guys ever have a citrus that feels, that you want a juice that feels hard? It's good to roll your lime. You can just press down with your, the heel of your hand and roll it back and forth to get those juices flowing in there, right? You're kind of softening up the lime or the lemon. It works great for both. So I did that already. Once it's, once it's cut in half, you don't want to roll it because you'll end up squeezing juice everywhere. So you can use a juicer if you'd like, um, or you can just squeeze with your hand, squeeze the juice. So I'll show you both because at home I don't have a juicer. I used to, I think it broke. I don't know what happened to it. So I just use my hand. You really have to squeeze hard to get all the juice out and I use the side of the bowl. So I'll show you how to do that. But I'll juice one half too. So you always, with this kind of juicer, you know, line up the middle of your citrus with the tip of the juicer and then just squeeze and turn until it's all hollowed out. Okay, we wanna get as much juice out as we can. And now the beautiful thing about limes is that somehow they have no seeds, okay? I don't know why, like how do they create more limes? I don't know, but they don't. And there isn't as much pulp as lemons. So you don't need to worry about squeezing it right into the bowl because you're not gonna end up with uh, seeds in there. All right, look at that. No juice left in there, no flesh left in there. So I'm gonna pour what I have in here over my salsa. And this is a pretty small lime, so if I have to use my other lime, I will. We'll see, we'll taste it. So I'm gonna show you now how to just squeeze it right over. So of course you can just squeeze first. Um, and just keep turning the line and squeezing it at different angles. Okay, kind of rolling it between your fingers. And then this is a trick that I learned from my grandma, who is from Belgrade. I mean, she's passed away now, but she lived in Belgrade for most of her life. And partly during World War II, when they didn't have a lot, you know, the, everything was rationed. There wasn't a lot of fresh stuff. She doesn't waste anything. She makes sure she gets every last bit out of whatever she's doing. So she showed me how you can squeeze and you think you're done, right? Like, oh, I can't get any more juice out. And then you can just run the peel along the side of the bowl and more juice comes out, which I think is pretty great. And you get a little bit of pulp in there, but it's not a big deal, especially with the lime. See, it's still coming out. And I just keep rolling the lime peel. There we go. Now we're done. Okay, now I'm gonna taste, you should taste the lime too. Mmm, so tart, so tart. Okay, now it is time to add some salt. We're gonna start with a quarter teaspoon. I think we're gonna need a little bit more, but I'm gonna do a quarter teaspoon, and now we're gonna gently top, okay? Very gently, because like I said, I don't wanna mash my avocado. Get it all like mushy. So just gently, fold, you know, kind of picking it up at the bottom, folding it over the top, so that all of our ingredients combine, our lime juice coats everything, our salt gets nicely distributed. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, now it's time to taste, okay? We're not gonna serve it yet because we wanna taste it, see if we need to add more salt, because this might in part depend on how salty our chips are too. So I'm gonna go get some of my chips and taste the salsa. And you guys should get your chips, whether you made your own or you bought chips, and let's give it a little bit of a taste. And then we'll decide if we wanna add more salt or if we think we're good. 
I'm gonna go grab my chips. I just took a little plate of chips from my baking sheet from the mix I made. And now I'm just gonna break a piece off because no double dipping in the communal bowl, okay guys? Okay, just gonna break a piece off here and get a nice piece with a little bit of everything on it. Mmm. So good. I'm gonna add just a little bit more salt. I'm gonna add another quarter teaspoon of salt. This is a lot of salsa. Okay. And I'm gonna again gently toss it. Perfect. Amazing. I'm gonna go ahead and serve it up now. This is my little snack. I kind of ate breakfast, but I forgot to finish it, so I'm pretty hungry, and it's lunchtime already. Perfect, look at that. And so you can see why we call it rainbow salsa. So colorful, so beautiful, and so easy to make, right? So if you make a big batch like this, there's some chopping, of course, but no cooking except for cooking that corn just a little bit, right? So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Does anybody have any questions for me before we end class today? I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. And while you think about that and type it into the chat box, I'm gonna look up what we're making next week because I forgot. I should have checked before class, but I forgot. I'm gonna just grab my phone. Because you can always find it on our website. So I'm gonna to go to our website and see what we're making on our Facebook Live next week. Because we do this every week at 11 a.m. Central Time. And let's see here, Facebook Live. We are making, oh my gosh, green monster smoothie bowls. So for that, we're making a green smoothie, right? Because lots of times it's hard to get kids to eat their greens, right? But if you can make it drinkable and delicious, it can be a bit easier. Making a green smoothie, and then we're gonna have, serve it in a bowl and make our own homemade granola to go on top. Delicious. So anyway, I'm happy to stick around if anybody has any questions. I'd love for you to post photos of your salsa on our Facebook. You, know, you can comment to this video and post pictures of what you made, so I'd love to see it. And hopefully I'll see you guys next week. Be sure to check out, we've got like virtual classes, virtual camps going all summer. We make so many different dishes and we do it on Zoom and so it's very interactive and I can actually see you which is really cool because in this you only get to see me. Um, so uh, be sure to check out our website if you want to see what other things we have going on. Great. Well, thank you guys so much. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Oh, great. You love it. I'm so happy. Amazing. Have a great rest of your week. And I hope to see you all for Green Monster Smoothie Bowls next week. And by the way, I'm going to post the recipe in detail. Um, on our on our video archive page on our website so that if you didn't write it down um, Or you don't want to have to watch the video again, of course I'll post a proper like detailed recipe and obviously pretty simple, but just so you have a reference for future. Okay, great Thank you guys. Bye-bye